you have to listen how to meditate correctly. According to Masadipatana Sutta, Buddha said, Kaye Kaya Nupasi Viharati Atapi Sambhajano Satima Vinaya Loki Beja Domanasa. We have to practice ardently, clearly comprehending and mindful. These three things are important because it shows how we should meditate. When we meditate, when we contemplate the body in the body, that is, when we make ourselves aware of everything that is in the body, we must do it ardently, clearly comprehending, and mindful. Atapi, ardent, that means We must be energetic, put forth effort to be mindful, or to wash whatever is in our body. So ardent refers to the energy or effort we invest. Without effort, we cannot keep our mind on the object. We cannot meditate. So a certain amount of energy or effort is needed to practice meditation. It is not easy, it is not an easy thing to keep our mind on the objects always. So energy or effort is a requirement for the practice of meditation. And yogi must be clearly comprehending and mindful. Sampajano Satima. When yogi practice meditation, yogi must always be mindful. Yogi must be mindful of your breath, mindful of the movements of the abdomen, the different departments and the small activities of the body. Mindfulness is something like a stone hitting a wall. In order to throw a stone, you must put out energy. You throw the stone with energy and it hits the wall. Like the stone hitting the wall, mindfulness hits the object. Whatever the objects are, the bread or the movements of the abdomen or the activities of the body, Your mind, as it were, goes to these objects. That hitting of the objects is mindfulness, sati. When you have mindfulness combined with energy or effort, Your mind stays with the objects for some time. The stone after hitting the wall, when it is wet mud wall, 
stays with the wall. It gets stuck in the wall in the same way your mind goes to the objects and when it is held by energy and mindfulness, stays with the object. The staying of the mind with the objects is what we call samadhi concentration. So when you have mindfulness, you will achieve concentration. Only when you have developed concentration, you will have wisdom and the understanding of the true nature of the Namarupa. You will have clear comprehension of Namarupa process. So when it is said that Yogi should be mindful and clearly comprehending. This means you also must have concentration. It is essential to have clearly clear comprehension, which is wisdom also. Moreover, mindfulness and concentration belongs to the group of concentration. You know there are eight factors of the path, right understanding, right thinking, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration, eight factors. These eight factors are divided into three groups, sila group, samadhi group, and pinya group, morality group, concentration group, and wisdom group. Effort, mindfulness, and concentration belong to Samadhi group, concentration group. When one factor is practiced, the others have also to be practiced. So mindfulness here also means concentration. When you have concentration, when your mind stays with the objects for some time, you come to see the true nature of Namarupa, mind and body. You see that they are impermanent, unsatisfactory and insubstantial. Yogi will come to see the rising and passing way of Namarupa. When you have sufficient concentration, and then different thoughts come to you, you take note of them, the thoughts go away, you come to see this clearly only when you have the necessary concentration. So four things are needed so that your meditation is good. First, you have to ardently make effort Second, you have to practice mindfulness. Third, you have to develop concentration. And fourth, you have to understand and comprehend. These four constituents are essential for your good, good meditation. 
Paising atapi sambaja no sedima ardently clearly comprehending and mindful. Buddha showed us how to meditate, how to observe things, how to wash our breath, how to wash the movements of the abdomen and other activities of our body, as well as our feelings, consciousness, and the dharmas. So it is important when we meditate to have energy to support mindfulness so that we can generate sufficient concentration to penetrate the true nature of Namarupa. And then Buddha said, Vinaya Loke Beja Dhammanasam. Removing Abeja and Dominasa, covetousness and grief in the world. When Buddha said Loki in the world, it means the body, the feeling, the consciousness and Dhamma, or the aggregates of clinging. These are loka, loki. Abeja, covetousness means craving or greed or attachment. And dominasa, grief means ill will or hatred or anger or depression. By these words, Buddha showed the constituents that have to be removed. He showed the results of meditation, the results of being ardent, clearly comprehending and mindful, the results of having concentration. So when you make effort, when you are mindful, when you have concentration, and penetrating knowledge or wisdom, then you can remove covetousness and grief. You can remove greed and hatred, which are the two gross hindrances. They are all together five mental hindrances, but these are the grosser ones Abeja and Dominasa, Loba and Dosa. When you can remove the two grosser ones, you will be able to remove the other ones as well. When you clearly comprehend your breath or the movements of your abdomen, or your feelings or the, the other activities in your body. You will have neither craving nor attachment, neither ill will or hatred at that time. At every moment, you remove these factors from your mind when your meditation is good. And then we need to understand two kinds of vipassana. Pichaka vipassana and anumana vipassana. Pichaka vipassana, direct vipassana, and a new mana vipassana, inferential vipassana. First, you get the direct vipassana, that means you put your mind on the objects and you come to see these objects as impermanence, 
suffering and also after you have seen the real object you have observed as impermanent suffering and no soul you can make an inference that just as this object is impermanent suffering and no soul just as this object i'm observing is impermanent suffering and no soul so other objects will be impermanent and so on in that way you practice inferential vipassana on the other phenomena which you do not actually experience but inferential vipassana must come only after direct vipassana first you have to see that a certain object is impermanent only after that you can infer that just as this is impermanent suffering and also so the other objects are impermanent etc in direct vipassana you take the objects that you can experience or what you have experienced if you have not experienced jhana then you cannot take jhana as objects of vipassana so you can take non jhana consciousness and the mental factors along with these types of consciousness as the objects of meditation and vipassana begins with what is evident to the yogi what you can observe easily at the beginning of vipassana you don't try to understand or you don't try to see things that are subtle that cannot be easily seen so you begin with what is evident to you what is easy to comprehend that is one important things because if you try to see these if you try to see those they are not evident because they are not evident you don't see them clearly and if you don't see them clearly you don't see their characteristics you don't see them as impermanent suffering and no soul so we was now begins with what is evident what is prominent what is easy to see and also there are two kinds of objects internal object and external object internal ichata means that arises in your mind and in your body that you really experience bahida external means those that arise in the in other people and also those that are in outside things like trees and mountains and so on although both internal and external objects are the objects of vipassana meditation a yogi must concentrate on the internal objects b 
because only the internal objects are evident to the yogis. For example, the mind of another person, you don't know the mind of another person, you don't see the minds of another person, but you may infer that person is angry or that person is happy, etc. But it's not sure. You don't really see for yourself his state of mind. But what is happening in you and in your mind, you really know whether you are really angry or you are really happy or any others. So it is important that yogi should lay emphasis on observing the objects that are internal. That means your own states of mind, your own types of consciousness, your own material properties, sensation in your bodies and others. After Yogi has observed the internal objects and comes to know them as impermanence and so on, then you may do the inferential vipassana on the external objects such as mind. Mind, consciousness is impermanence. So the consciousness of other people is impermanence and so on. Sometimes such understanding just comes by itself and you don't have to deliberately think about it. Although both internal and external objects are the objects of vipassana meditation, yogi should lay emphasis on observing the internal objects as much as they can. Instead of looking for or searching for outside objects, yogi should concentrate on the objects that are in their mind and in their body. Looking for some Outside objects is actually a distraction. By doing that, your concentration and understanding cannot develop. Next, the objects of vipassana is the present object. Here also in inferential vipassana, yogi can take the past object and the future objects as the objects of meditation. But here also first there must be direct understanding, direct observation, direct vipassana on the objects that is evident to yogi. That which is evident to him is actually that which is present at the moment. So Yogi takes the objects at the present moment as the objects of meditation and tries to be mindful of it or make maintenance of it and try to see its characteristics, try to see that 
these phenomena are impermanent suffering and no soul. So in this regard, Buddha said, Pichyopa ninja yan dhamma tata tata vipasati asahira asangopa dawidwa anubyuhaye. After Yogi has seen the present objects, you clearly see the present objects as impermanent, suffering, and no soul. You may do inference or inferential vipassana. Just as this present objects is impermanent, suffering, and no soul, so the objects in the past were impermanent suffering and no soul. So the objects in the future will be impermanent suffering and no soul. That kind of contemplation or comprehension comes to a yogi actually almost by itself. After seeing the present objects as impermanent, suffering, and no soul, a yogi just comes to see that just as this is impermanence, suffering, and no soul, so the other objects are impermanent, etc. So what is important for the Vipassana Yogi is the objects at the present moment. That is because only the objects at the present moment can be observed and can be seen clearly, and objects that is past now cannot be observed, however much you may recall it to your mind, you do not see it clearly, you cannot see its characteristics and so on. And the objects that are to come, since they are not yet here, you cannot look at them, you cannot see them, you cannot observe them. So you cannot understand their true nature. Only the objects at the present moment lends itself to observation, investigation, or comprehending. So the objects at the present is the most important. And that objects at the present moment can be any of ultimate reality, your thoughts, your emotion, your sensation in the body, or the rising and falling of the abdomen, or breathing in and out, and there are many things. So remember Buddha's words, Atitan nanwagameya napati kinke nakatam. Yada titam bahinantam apatincha nakatam. Pichokpaninja yandaman tata tata vipasati asahiram asangopan tawi dwa anubyuhaye. Atitan nanwagameya napati kinke nakatam. Yada titam bahinanta apatincha nakatam. Pijokpaninja yandaman tata tata vipasati 
Asahira-asangopan-tawidwa-anubyuhaye. That means, do not let the past come back to you, or do not go after the past, because the past is already past. Do not long for the future because the future has not yet come. But a yogi who is able to be mindful of the objects at the present moment or the present moment as it arises should develop concentration and wisdom that cannot be dragged away by wrong view or by attachment, dana uh, and deity. That cannot be destroyed by wrong view and attachment. So Buddha instructed his disciple to be mindful of the objects at the present moment, not to go back to the past, and not to long for the future because they are not real actually. Yeah. One has already passed and so not here, the other is not yet here, so they are not here. However much you try to watch them, you will not see them clearly. So if you don't see them clearly, you cannot see their characteristics. But the present object is different. Same present object is in front of you. Present object is here, as it were in front of your eyes. You can watch it, you can examine it, and you can see it clearly. When you see it clearly, you know that it arises and it disappears. You see it if you mindful. It is impermanent and it is constantly oppressed by arising and disappearing because one arises and disappears and then another arises and then disappears and so on. It is like being bombarded by arising and disappearing. This sense of being constantly oppressed by arising and disappearing is what we call dukkha, what we call suffering. And also we know that we cannot do anything about it, we just have to accept it, we cannot make the impermanence permanence, we cannot make suffering happiness, and so on. So we have no control over it, and that having no control over it is what we meant by anatta, no soul. So these three characteristics are important because without seeing these three characteristics, we cannot make progress or we cannot get to the point where we are dispassionate to us all mental and physical phenomena dispassionate to our suffering. So it is important that we pay attention to the objects at the present moment and not to be distracted to the past or to the future. If you think of the future and think of what will happen in the future, or whatever, you are distracted. When you are distracted, you cannot make notes of the present objects clearly. If you do not see the present clearly, 
Your concentration and understanding cannot develop. That is why sometimes people spend a lot of time, maybe days or weeks, and they would not make progress in their practice. So it is important that the objects you take must belong to the ultimate reality, and the objects you take must be the one which is easy to see, which is evident, and it must be the objects which is in the present moment. So Yogi should understand the objects of Vipassana meditation. But if you are practicing with a teacher, you just need to follow your teacher instruction. If you follow his instruction properly, you don't have to worry about what objects it is or what you are doing and what objects you are taking. And if you are on your own, you should understand that Vipassana does not take concepts as object. Vipassana takes ultimate reality only as objects, and ultimate reality means your mind, your thoughts, your emotion, sensation in your body, movements of the body, and so on. They are called ultimate reality. And among the ultimate reality, we concentrate on what is in mundane, Lokia. And among the mundane, the objects you take are mostly non-jhana consciousness and concomitant mental factors and all material properties. These can be both in external and internal, and you should concentrate more on internal objects and then external objects. Actually, they are to be taken as objects only when they force into your mind like when you hear a noise. And also you should concentrate on the objects at the present moment and not on those that are past or that are yet to come. So when you practice Vipassana meditation, Yogi should keep this in your mind and try to be mindful of the objects at the present moment. Sometimes it is the breathing or the movements of the abdomen rising and falling. Sometimes your thoughts going here and there, sometimes emotions, sometimes sensation in your body. Whatever is in evident at the present moment, it is the objects of your Vipassana meditation. If you can just pay attention to the objects at the present moment and not go back to the past, not long for the future, or not think, for the, not think about the future, you will develop concentration quickly. When your concentration gets developed, you will come to see the true nature of Namarupa, that these Namarupa phenomena are impermanent, they are suffering, and they are no soul. And this is the purpose of the functions of Vipassana, because the meaning of the words Vipassana is seeing in various ways. See in various ways means seeing 
mental and physical phenomena as impermanence, suffering, and no soul. So when you practice vipassana, it is important that you see these three characteristics. So you need to practice diligently. Buddha really encouraged by these words. And you have a correct method, and if you practice diligently, you will achieve your goal. So we have to stop our discourse for today by practicing vipassana meditation continuously, continuously and meticulously. May all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.